Hello and welcome to CSTW's podcast and broadcast of Writer's Talk. Today I am visited by Hassan Kwame Jeffries, who was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and has uh, went to school at Morehouse and Duke for undergrad and graduate school, and has gone on to write a book called Bloody Lounds, The Civil Rights and Black Power uh, in Alabama's Black Belt. And he's going to talk to me today about the book and writing and the things that he's doing. He's also, I should mention, an assistant professor at, uh, of history in, at Ohio State University <laughs> and uh, with a dual appointment with their Kerwin Institute for Race and Ethnicity. Did I get that name right. correctly, the whole thing? Okay, good. So uh, welcome today, Dr. Thank Jeffries. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Great. Well, and uh, I'd like to start off by asking you, tell me about how this book came about. It seems like it... It's got a lot of footnotes. You've got maybe 50 pages worth of uh, footnotes at the end. Or right. so. I don't know if that's exactly it, but a lot of, a lot of detail, a lot of research went into the book. Right. Um, is this uh, something that had, was part of your dissertation or something that came out after? It, 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 start, it started out as a project in graduate school. as a mm -hmm. part of uh, my dissertation uh, work and research. Um, and then when I sort of completed the dissertation, thinking about writing, I thought the conversion from dissertation to book would be adding a couple commas and uh, some punctuation here and there. And so four or five years later, after I completely rewrote the thing, mm -hmm. uh, that's what we wind up with uh, in the final book format. Okay. Uh, but as a historian, um, you know, part of our craft, uh, part of what we do uh, is to research. Uh, so before we can even get to the writing, uh, there was a couple of years of uh, research, just uh, finding the history, uh, documenting the history, okay. and then using that as the basis uh, to write the book. Tell me about that research. I mean, you're meeting with people, you're talking with them. Um, how did that uh, happen? What kind of ethnogra ethnographic techniques did you use? How did you find you, the people that you wanted to interview? Well, it, it, there was a mix. There was a mix of sort of uh, uh, research methodologies. I mean, the first that I used was what historians are trained to do, um, regardless of subject, and that's just the traditional archival uh, search, uh, looking at microfilm, looking at newspapers, uh, going to the state uh, Alabama Department of Archives and History, state archives, um, but not only in Alabama, but then also uh, various special collections, um, uh, Library of Congress and the like. So it's just a lot of page turning uh, and trying to uh, get the skeleton uh, for the history of the county. Although I talk about, uh, write about the sort of civil rights movement and social organizing in the African American community, I mean, really to tell the story. I had to reconstruct the, really the history of the county. And in order to do that, uh, I had to uh, go into the archives. But once mm -hmm. I got that, the, the skeleton of the story uh, down, or I had a sense of who the people were, when things happened uh, through that archival research, uh, then I was able to go in uh, and talk to people on the ground, not only uh, local people, people who had lived there, who had lived through the movement, uh, but also uh, SNCC organizers, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, those uh, civil rights activists who went into Alabama in the mid-1960s and worked with the local people. And you mentioned locals. I'm, I'm curious uh, about the role of, of outsiders and in, in its relation to the locals. The, our outsiders were very important to the civil rights movement in Alabama, but how did the locals feel about the presence of that? Uh, did you get a lot of reaction to things like that as you were talking to the people? On the I did, and, and, and dependent upon who you asked, mm -hmm. uh, because this there's, there's obviously is one county, one community, um, but within that one community, um, there are various different groups. I mean, you had the white community, you had the African American community, you had within the African American community different class divisions. Uh, so depending upon who you were, um, there was a different level of receptivity. On the white side, uh, back in the 60s, uh, 1965, when SNCC organizers move in, uh, there was great hostility towards them. I mean, as outsiders, uh, they were dubbed outside agitators. And, mm -hmm. and that's a long history. I mean, uh, because of the long history of uh, uh, exploitation of African-American laborers uh, in the South, and particularly in these rural areas, there was this sense uh, that African-Americans would be content with their position and status in life uh, as long as outsiders did not stir them up, mm -hmm. and which wasn't true. Right. As I say, I think you, you show that in the book a number of times, trying to show that um, the movement towards civil rights, or as you, you term them, also freedom rights mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the book, um, that that isn't really the case, that there was plenty going on, but the repercussions were so 
uh, deadly. Right. Uh, and that's why the book is bloody. Right. Um, I mean, one of the things that we forget about is how violent the South was uh, and how violent segregation and Jim Crow was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't just the fact that somebody couldn't drink at a water fountain. It was that violence was used to maintain this institution of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And that violence created fear. And it was that worrying, concern about that fear that kept people from challenging uh, inequality and white supremacy publicly. Mm -hmm. Now, the events in this book happened <coughs> around 50 years ago. Uh, when you talk to the young people uh, that, are, that were in this county in Lowndes, what kind of perspective did they bring to it? How did how did they relate to these? Were they just ancient history, mm -hmm. or did they have a sense that it was something that their parents or grandparents were active participants in? It was a real mix. Uh, for some people, uh, it was very current. Uh, but unfortunately, for many people, for many young people, it was distant history. I was surprised um, by how many people, even in Lowndes County itself, um, didn't really know uh, the history of uh, this remarkable movement that happened mm -hmm. uh, in their own uh, hometown, in their own backyard. Uh, I, I, I spoke with a lady in an interview, and, and she was commenting on this very thing. Uh, and she had worked in the school system for many years, uh, and she was the daughter of somebody who was active in the movement. Uh, and she said one day that there was a group um, from, I want to say Amsterdam, uh, who had come over uh, and were on a civil rights tour and were going through uh, Alabama and stopped in Lowndes County, uh, school, school kids, uh, and she was struck by the fact that they knew more about the Lowndes County freedom struggle and the Lowndes County freedom organization, independent politics, uh, coming from across the Atlantic uh, than the kids uh, who were growing up in the county, which speaks, one, to uh, is somewhat of an indictment against the public school systems and, and, and school systems there, uh, but also is really problem, uh, re reflects uh, an uh, issue that America has uh, and not really uh, wrestling with and dealing with and keeping current uh, African-American and really American history. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, so when you had talked to the current Alabama residents, what do they think about it today? How do they respond to it today uh, for those who did remember it? How, what were the reactions like when you started bringing up some of this stuff from 50 years ago? Again, it depends upon who you ask. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the white side, there was a lot of reluctance to even talk about it. Um, well, that's in the past. Those things happened. We've gotten over them. Uh, things weren't quite as bad as we thought they were. Outsiders made them worse. I mean, so there's a lot of, there, there was significant reluctance to deal with, you know, the history, um, to admit participation in, in various terrorist organizations, like the White Citizens Council, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so on that side, it was a lot of reluctance. And if w things are better left uh, if alone, and let's not discuss and let's not talk about it. But on the African-American side, um, there was a much greater willingness um, to talk about the history. Um, and I can't tell you how many people were glad uh, to talk about it uh, and hadn't had a chance to talk about it in years. Mm -hmm. uh, were in ha and we're, were really excited um, that I was um, you know, attempting to recover and capture and put in print uh, this important history. Okay.